I come from a land, from a faraway place, where the caravan camels grow. Where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to an installment of media representations of Arabs and Muslims in the West. Now the media is quite powerful and interesting. In fact, the reason why you probably already know my name is because of the media. Hi, I'm Mohammed. And yes, the name Mohammed does quite excite the media a lot. This video will present an overview of studies previously undertaken on the media portrayals and effects of Muslims and Arabs towards a Western framework. Muslims, Arabs and Islam seem to be the number one topic of interest. In newspapers, headlines, TV coverage, films, you name it, they are excellent gossip material. An important question would be to find out why is this so? An historical and textual analysis also strikes the mind. The core of this research mainly reinforces the thesis of the late great Edward Said, Orientalism in 1978, followed by covering Islam in 1981. In brief, this research suggests a number of interesting things. But the, one of the main ideas was that the West distorted view of Islam in the Western spheres has insinuated itself into the Islamic world to an extent that Muslims in general began to see themselves not as they are, but how the West sees them. And this goes on to ultimately submit the idea of media's consistently demonizing Arabs and Muslims in the West. This video will present leading intellectuals. It will include researchers and theories on the topic, ranging from the late Ed Edward Said to giant Noam Chomsky, Peter Manning, Jack Shaheen, Lame Rain, and truly, the list does go on. But before we continue, I think it's important to define some terms, mainly the two, Muslim and media. According to Chomsky, media is defined as the main means of mass communication, whether TV, radio, and newspapers, regarded collectively. A Muslim is one who submits his will to God in the religion of Islam. So now that we've identified what we're dealing with, let us identify the problems. Whether it is covertly or overtly, Muslims and Arabs are almost always depicted offensively in films, TV shows or video games. Whether it's the Libyan terrorists who shoot down the doctor in Back to the Future, or a cutscene from the video game Command and Conquer. Muslims and Arabs are consistently demonized and shown to be violent, uncivilized, aggressive and unpredictable in Western media, according to Hafiz. These infinitely negative portrayals range vividly from silent movies and cartoons to modern day Hollywood blockbusters. Even Walt Disney's beloved Aladdin, as we just heard in the opening theme song, where we cut off your ears if we don't like your face, it's barbaric but hey, it's home. Now what does an Arab or Muslim look like? Are they one and the same? Does an Arab look like this? Or perhaps something like this? While most content analysis of the representations of Muslims and Arabs in the mass media tend to focus on factual media, predominantly newspapers, TV, but fictional media is equally important, especially in the context of this research. Now this point is affirmed by the works of Jack Shaheen. Shaheen looks at more than a thousand films, films from the early obscure days of Hollywood to recent blockbusters make invisible what too many of us do not see, a consistent pattern of hateful stereotypes of Arabs and Muslims. When we think of Arabs and Muslims, what is it that we see? What are the images that come to mind? In films, Arabs and Muslims are the most maligned group in the history of Hollywood being portrayed as basically subhuman. This supports the thesis of Edward Said's Orientalism and goes on to show the consistent demonization of Arabs and Muslims. So let us now explore some more films which convey the exact same message. Do 
you are late. A thousand apologies, oh patient one. You have it then. I had to slit a few throats, but I got it. Disney's beloved Aladdin, seen by millions of children worldwide, but unfortunately recycling the old, degrading stereotypes of Arabs and Muslims from Hollywood's past. See, the Arab is one-dimensional caricature, cartoon cutouts, used by filmmakers as stock villains and comic relief. So over and over again, we see Arabs portrayed as buffoons, as if their only purpose is to deliver cheap laughs. Every night I was forced to perform unspeakable acts with circumcised dogs. Oh, dogs are better than sheep. They're cleaner, I know, I've tried both. Over and over again, they are portrayed as if they are inept. So in a movie like True Lies, not only are the Arabs and Muslims dangerous, but they're also incompetent. I, we are all prepared to die. With one turn of that key, two million of your people will die instantly. What key? That key! Who's taking the key? I have a weakness for blondes and women without mustaches. All the stereotypes are here. Too rich, too stupid to know the value of money. In America. Get me 12 sweets. Better yet, the entire floor. And of course, he's oversexed, he's lecherous, and uncontrollably obsessed with the American woman. Here, my desert blossom. Give the change. Have you ever considered joining a harem? This seems quite ridiculous. Why does media, in whichever form it may be, inject Arabs and Muslims into films having nothing to do with them in the first place? So now the stereotype has become so widespread that it's almost invisible to people. And the reason being is that we've grown up with these images. We've seen them on TV shows, our beloved cartoons. But it has indeed gone too far. Listen to the sound Jesus. of our talk. So you're sitting down watching a movie like Back to the Future about a mad scientist. And yet early on in the film we see these crazy Libyans, these crazy violent Libyans with machine guns in the parking lot trying to gun down the protagonist. Now I don't think this film was particularly from the future. Because there was the same old stereotyping from the past. The paranoia truly does deepen. The exact same stereotypes exist within video games. Children are often playing these video games all the time. The time has come. Our cause is just, and our soldiers stand ready. Video games like Command and Conquer are really no different to the films that we've just seen. does relate back to Dennis McQuell's concept of cultivation theory, where there is heavy exposure to such content, creating a false reality in the minds of viewers on the outside. Chomsky suggests that the media is a significant social agent, with the potential to influence community perceptions. Its influence can seriously impact on minority groups, subjecting them to exclusionary pressures by implying that they hold alien characteristics which don't correspond with the values of mainstream Australia. Dennis in 2005 states not only is print media capable of such effects, but also films can create the same consequences on Arabs and Muslims. This is also stated by Mishra, Jahidi, Faiz and Abdullah 2010. Now stereotypes take a long time to wither away, and for many they're comfortable with their prejudice not wanting to change, and have grown accustomed to this space. The tragic events of 9-11, where 19 Arab Muslim terrorists were responsible for the deaths of nearly 3,000 people. But now, instead of saying that this is the lunatic fringe 
we say no actually these are reflecting the actions of 1.6 billion people now that's dangerous because we don't go and say that the actions of the Ku Klux Klan members who are Christians represent Christianity do we look at Oklahoma City bombings Timothy McVeigh young Irish Catholic man but do we say that all Irish Catholics are terrorists I mean nobody even knew McVeigh's background his religious status race it wasn't even part of the media story had this however been an arab or a muslim then the media would most definitely want everyone to know and this is a great example of hypocrisy in the media now contrast this with the news presented in australia's sydney siege in 2014 only recently the hostage crisis in martin place Now notice the attention all the people around him notice how the media focuses on his religious background his ethnic description and personal details and then slowly associate this with the tragic event that took place but we see unfortunately a similar reporting of affiliating such behavior such lunatic behavior with the rest of the muslim population now keep in mind that this tragic event was in 2014 but did we just forget about the particular case in lunch club cafe in kalasi western australia in november only a month before let her go mate let her go let her go Seven's Western Australia studios was just across the street and didn't even run a 24/7 coverage of it. What about the Enala siege in Brisbane on 29th of September 2014? Again, this didn't make the news in Australia because an Arab or a Muslim wasn't particularly involved. Now, although we've looked at some films, cartoons, TV shows, video games, they are quite general and broad. Now, media can be quite general itself. However, let's narrow it down to some prominent studies which have been done. Now, these studies do surely reinforce Edward Said's Orientalism thesis. So, let us begin by looking at studies conducted in Britain between 1994 to 1996 by Elizabeth Paul. She found out that while the coverage of British Muslims was more detailed than the one overseas, an Orientalist discourse was present in the reporting. Focusing on the Australian context now, Kabir in his article "Depiction of Muslims in Selected Australian Media" argues that the negative media representations of Arabs and Muslims, coupled with the influence of certain lobby groups, exerts significant influence on the Australian public. Continuing on with this Australian context, a number of important content analyses have been conducted on the representations of Muslims and Arabs. For example, research by Halim Rain conducted prior to 9/11 shows that negative portrayals of Islam and Muslims was prevalent in the Australian press. Rain's work, the Australian press coverage of Islam, involved a content analysis of 1,038 articles published. And 1,038 articles published is a large amount. These included the Australian, Sydney Morning Herald, and the West Australian, from years 1996 to 2000. containing the words islam terrorist or muslim whether in the headlines whether in a leading paragraph or on the front page now these findings focused on the middle east 29% of the time they focused on war crisis or conflict 52% of the time and showed muslims to be fighting against christians 45% of the time also showing muslims as the aggressors in war or conflict 80% of the time. A more recent study by Sharam and Bianca Smith has examined the coverage of Islam, Muslims and Arabs in the Age and the Herald Sun between September 11 and 2004. Now their study found that the prevalence of negative images of Islam and Arabs in the newspapers weren't to an extent that they could be considered Islamophobic. However, the stereotyping had still existed. Now we all know that Australian identity is enriched by the fusion of many cultures and traditions. Now that is a fact that we cannot deny. 
multiculturalism has contributed to the complex social mosaic that makes Australia a tapestry of harmony. But this process, however, has not been without its challenges. Now, many European settlers have relied on similar religious and historical traditions to merge with the border community, but the Muslims from the Middle East have found this particularly a more challenging process. This is in part, according to Alan and Nielsen, 2002, part of a religious and cultural difference and also misperceptions that arise as a result. So for example, in the recent past, issues of international terrorism, security concerns appear to have made matters much worse. Also, things like the Cronulla riots, the Bali bombings and the arrival of asylum seekers amid this heightened sense of insecurity leading commentators to assume a connection between terrorism and Muslims. Galloway seems to suggest that a consequence therefore appears to have arisen a disturbing sense that Muslims are un-Australian and that Islam poses a threat to the Australian way of life. Indeed, it is claimed that the media reproduces these images of Muslims and Arabs as the other by describing them as fundamentalists, terrorists, sexist, militant, undemocratic, violent, suicide bombers, hijackers, scripturalists and fanatics, you name it, the list does go on, according to Dunn 2001. These stereotypes are linked to contexts of war, conflicts, violence, disunity and sexism. But much of this scholarship reinforces the argument that the us and them dialectic is manifest in Australia and that Muslims continue to be vilified in our community, according to Rain and Hafiz 2000. Gurgis, Rain, Iwat and Abdullah claim that Muslims in Australia have experienced alienation, racism and vilification before the terrorist attacks in 2001. And the racial stereotyping of all Muslims as Arabs and all Arabs as Muslims during the Gulf War led to series of physical attacks, racial insults and negative stereotyping of Muslims in Australia. The reporting of which is considered to have produced a crisis in community relations between Muslims and the wider society in New South Wales. And this also extends to Australia as a whole. The hundreds of attacks, verbal and physical, on Muslims and those of Muslim appearance were considered to be racially and religiously motivated, in turn producing a climate of fear among Arabs and Muslims. Amongst the almost 500,000 Muslims in Australia, totaling a 2.3% of the population, have felt, to some extent, these derogatory stereotypes and demonization in their lives. Now there will always be a general tendency to expect the mass media to have at least some effects on audiences. This is stated by Noam Chomsky. Within the field of media studies, this issue has been a central debate for decades. Oscillating between a view of the media as having powerful effects to one where those effects are considered limited. And much research has taken place, having many journals involved such as the Australian Journal of Communication, the International Journal of Education and Research, International Journal of Media and Culture Politics, all concerned with the media representations of Arab Islamic people. In order to bridge this gap between the negative reporting of Islam heightened, highlighting by numerous content analysis, empirical research is required that tests the public's knowledge of Islam and attitudes towards Muslims a greater sense of education, information and increase of communication is potentially vital and necessary for some improvement in this matter. Now in summary, according to the literature, the mass media does play a significant role on the production and reproduction of beliefs, opinions, stereotypes, prejudices and ideologies. Previous studies have shown that the dominant mass media tend to marginalize the other and misrepresent the events regarding Islam and Arabs. Negative portrayals of Muslims has intensified following the September 11 attacks and also other attacks and events such as Cronulla riots, the international Bali bombings and the Lebanese gang rapes. But it's obvious that the mainstream news media depicts it in an overall negative picture. 
However, an extremely important question still remains, which is whether or not modern Australian Western media can defeat this history of Orientalism as bestowed by Edward Said in 1978 to alternatively portray a non-stereotypical image of Arabs and Muslims in such a crucial time and age.